I tried to make him cry too. You know, his parents <laughs> abusive. <laughs> so when I was like, I don't remember this, but when I was a kid, apparently I stabbed him with a weed digger. Did you punch girls in the stomach? Know. No, but you know what? I did hit a boy. Off, 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 off. The pill. All right, clappy claps. You never get it right. Ooh. Oh, I, I don't know. Are you trying to go last or are you trying to go at the same time? No, I never try to go at the same time. Oh. Because then when I edit it, it I never to... asked you. I just always wondered why oh. you did that. I actually thought you guys tried to go together and you guys never make it. So this is a rare case where like one of our guests actually watch <laughs> our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, introduce us. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Off the Pill Podcast. Today is a special Mother's Day edition. That's why we have Paco. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that funny. Fargo! <laughs> and we have my mother as well. <laughs> Lucy Higa! <laughs> yeah, so today is a special... Actually, is it going to be on Mother's Day? It is. Yes. Mother's Day is Sunday. It's, it's always Sunday. on Sunday. Always huh? on Sunday. See, we mm -hmm. did this specifically... We did our release schedule for Sundays so that it would line up with this. Oh, yeah. For this really. very episode. Yep. And Father's Days and Easter's. And They're not. Our father. Father's Day isn't on Sunday. Is Father's it? Day Sunday as well. Uh, is it? I'm not sure. Yeah, I thought. I don't know. Uh, I hate holidays that always like land on a day of the week. No, I mean, well, I actually like holidays that stay the same. Like, I don't like holidays that aren't on the same day. Like, yeah, you so know, how Halloween's always on. Wait, Halloween? Halloween's no, no, no. The so you're talking <laughs> about Thursday. Thanksgiving? Yeah, Thanksgiving is always on Thursday. On Thursday. Yeah, and you know. Uh, Easter Sunday, like yeah. I like when it's like always on the same day, because yeah. then I don't know. Yeah, it, it does confuse things. Yeah, I don't know why I went into that. But. No idea, <laughs> no idea at all. I don't know. That's what a thoughts. great start to the podcast! <laughs> <sighs> I know I didn't come prepared today because normally, uh, like, if there's a guest in mine, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start thinking about what to ask and like what kind of questions do I have. But um, this is different for me. <laughs> this was your idea. It was. It was because I thought that this would be a, a, a pretty fun episode. Makes sense for Mother's you know, Day. Mother's yeah. Day, get to sense. see. Not a lot of people actually ever get to see Auntie Lucy on camera. She's on camera a bit. No, actually. but every time BTS. I film her, she's always like, Paco. What do you say, Auntie? <laughs> what do I say? I say, Paco, you know that this is not going to be in the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you, a lot of times you cut it out, though, right? No, a lot of times I put it in. No, <laughs> not, not the face-to-face, -face, though. Oh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because then I'd be like, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. Yeah. But uh, it's, uh, I, I guess th this would be cool to like, you know, kind of see uh, the person that, you know, created and, and gave a lot of guidance to Ryan, you know? So the creator. Uh, the, the creator of Ryan. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, first of all, happy Mother's Day to all the other mothers. I, since today, it's not technically Mother's Day for us today, but yeah. it will be for people watching this. So happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. But sorry, go ahead. Nah, nah, it's cool. <laughs> I didn't just want to wish her, you know, I'm not selfish. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Paco. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even Mother's Day for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, uh, uh, I, yeah, how about, how about we just go into a little bit of it, uh, you know, introduce yourself, uh, you know, your Ryan's mom. But what else do you do for the company? Because a lot of people actually, the super fans kind of mm -hmm. know a little bit, but there's a lot of stuff that you do behind the scenes that you don't, you know ever show on camera oh it's really kind of boring but i, I they want to know still <laughs> so it's not your choice if it's boring or not we want to know the boring stuff i just like to think of myself as um i'm just helping behind the scenes i don't like to be in front of the camera mm -hmm. so i'll just be like behind the scenes whatever you guys yep. and need. trust me i tried <laughs> Many times, you know, I mean, like Kev used to use his dad, Kev Trump used to use his dad all the time. And that every video that he did with him worked really well. And then, uh, you know, <laughs> and your parents are kind of the opposite. I uh, know they don't, they would not, she would not. Well, actually my dad is worse. He refuses right. to be, you know, I had to trick him to be into some stuff. Um, but she does, she really doesn't like it either. Yeah. Why is that? What's your issue? I don't, I don't like um, the way I look. On camera, you know, I don't, I don't like pictures, and then I don't think I sound good. You know, I don't think like have a, a nice voice. I don't like the way I sound. Most people are like that though, yeah. except really? for Paco. He really <laughs> likes. No, actually, sounds. I didn't like the way I sounded either. When I was first like editing my own videos, I was like, "Ooh, this is how I sound." Really? Yeah. But what I learned is that 
the reason why we're not used to hearing how we actually sound is because in our heads, right. our skulls act as like tuning devices right. and stuff. Yep. So, so it sounds different. Yeah, we sound different. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's why when we hear something, how we actually sound, we're like, whoa. I this, know. This is not how I imagined. You right. Know? Exactly. So, yeah. So I don't like that. And then I don't like to act. So, like, I don't mind this because I feel like. You're just talking. I'm just talking, yeah. Or like mm -hmm. that rap video, like I thought I was just playing a game or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't know it was going to be like the video. Yeah. So, I mean, it was okay. Mm. Yeah, it was just being a good sport. You know? Yeah. You're a great sport. Thank it you, was Paco. making my mom rap like Eminem video yeah. for those that don't know. And that video was so funny. When yeah. the vacuum cleaner turned into the guns <laughs> and everything. That's hilarious. But uh, how about let's let's go uh and I think this is kind of gonna be almost like a a long Twitter type of question. Yeah, I mean there was a lot of good questions yeah. on there. And uh, I guess, you know, we're going to find out mm. a little bit more about Ryan's childhood. Really? Yes. Interesting. And, yeah. And, and your parenting <laughs> tactics. Guess. Wow. And, you know, we got to go kind of edgy at first. So did you spank him as a kid? Um, I must have because ta did. talking only goes so far. But I, I wasn't like a, a wooden spoon or... I mean, was I even like a ruler? I think you did use a wooden spoon. No. You were more of a, like... Pull your ear, like, hey. Yeah, and so our my thing ear was kind of like, person. you do that because you can't see. There's no like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's no like. <laughs> well, you know, like if some if you if you hit them too hard, you might get a bruise. But yep. if you just pinch the ear, just a little redness, it'll go away. <laughs> Who's see, worse? She's abusive now. In today's day and age, that's considered child abuse. No, no, no. Who, who no. is worse though, you or Uncle Wendell? I think it was equal, except that I think his level, like you know. He's a little bit more tolerant, maybe. Mm. Like, I'll go from, like, here to there. <laughs> oh. You know? Yeah. I'd be like, talk, talk, and then, okay. And then it's like, that's it. Zero to 100. It's yeah. black and white for you then. Yeah. 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 And then, also, what, tr I guess, in, in Ryan, like, growing up, because you guys are kind of similar in that aspect that you both right. have ADHD, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you saw yourself, a lot of yourself in him. Actually, though, I think only when he got diagnosed, then it was like, oh, wow, that's how I was. You know, like when people talk, I have to like really focus. Otherwise, I'm not listening. And so it's bad when he and I go into a meeting because I know he's not listening. So I'm like, oh, I have I'm to be listening. So <laughs> I just don't know how much I retain. Right. So I'm like, oh, I have to be like, like really listening because <laughs> I know he might not be listening, you know. But if it's um, inter interesting, I'll, I'll remember it. But Sometimes. I think it's 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 good to know that you are because when you recognize it, then you you know what you need to how you have to adjust yourself. You yeah. Know? But like him, I hate to read. Mm. I mean, I just I just can't read read through a whole book. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not much of a reader. Nope. Ryan's not much of a listener. As soon as Ryan has his phone out, I know I should just stop talking because <laughs> he's not paying attention. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I, I talk, going into that, going into a meeting together, I think a lot of people don't know this. Not so behind the scenes because you didn't really go specifically into mm -hmm. what you do, but you are like an acting manager for him, right? Yeah, but I don't like to say I'm a, I'm his manager. You don't like you to know? say, it, but that's your job. <laughs> because I don't manage him. Yeah, I mean, I I do things that uh, make his job easier or gives him time to do what he needs to do, which is like create, right? Yeah. So I do all of the other things, all, you know, the business side of it. And then, like, when you guys come, I know he's not going to cook, so <laughs> I'll cook for you folks, yeah. make the snacks, um, clean up. You know, he doesn't have time for that. So, so Auntie is kind of like a, a manager, caterer, <laughs> accountant. Uh, well, she that, used to actually yeah, you, be an accountant, right. retired now, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when you retired, were you still, uh, I guess, was Ryan, when, when did you start kind of like helping him out on the business aspect. So I think um, it was good because we kind of grew together, right? Like we both knew nothing of YouTube. And so yep. we kind of like learned together. So I think it it was kind of helpful for the relationship because it wasn't like I knew more than him. He didn't know more than me. And so we kind of just helped each other along the way. So it was, it was pretty good. And yep. a lot of mistakes yeah. were made, mm -hmm. but learning experiences. Yeah, you know? exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, with that, 
you know, because a lot, a lot of, especially Asian parents mm-hmm. would not allow their child to go in something in like a creative aspect. Uh, but because you guys were growing together, do you think that helped or what helped you be more understanding and lenient of letting uh, your son go into this when your other better son, Kyle, <laughs> is uh, an x-ray technician, right? Right. And he, like, completed, he graduated. Right. Uh, and, you know, he is about to get married. <laughs> and he's, he has a career. I mean, he, Kyle's, I don't know, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, I think Kyle's a better child. Well, first of all, you're not supposed to compare, Paco. <laughs> when you become a parent, you shouldn't compare your children. You know, it's funny, though, I got better <laughs> s- grades than him in school. <laughs> Yeah, but he was the better judoer. He was. <laughs> Kyle he was, was actually an underachiever. Yep. He he could have been like, like, so much so much better at judo. He mm-hmm. could have like even even too. So he he got his extra tech, and then um, he's debating. Oh, should he get his nuke med? And I'm like, oh, you should get your nuke med, you know, because, I mean, what's two more years? And he's like, uh. I mean, nuclear he, medicine degree, right? For those that don't know what nuke med is, basically it's, smart. It's an extra two years of schooling, right? Yeah, an extra two years. Yeah. So you know, he'd be the type like, and I just I, so it was fifty fifty because he's a type to like I'm satisfied. Yeah, you know, but um, and in fact, that's what Ryan was gonna go into first, and then that's yeah. So actually, when he dropped out, I mm-hmm. guess what was making you so like understanding and accepting of that? Because your first kid was like went through the the usual you know school career right, all right. that stuff. Oh no, you still you still want I still want it. We still wanted him to go to school, you know? It's not like we said like, "Oh yeah, go for it," you know? But I think it's a parents well, it, the way we think is that you want your kid to do something that they enjoy, right? And so you force your kid to do something and what if they hate it? But you but you also as a parent want to tell them the downside of what it is, you know? So I remember I told him well, you know, if you do this and it ends and you go back to college, your your friends are all graduated, they'd be working. And he's like, yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> and then yep. I was like, well, you know, <laughs> you know, you just have to yeah. give them the downside because that's all you can do. As long as you make them aware. And that's, that's part of your job is to just give them guidance, you know. But really, you just want them to do what they want to do and then support them. How about for you, Ryan? Like, at what point were you like, no, I think this can really be a thing for me? Like, did you have to do a lot of persuading for her, or was it more just like no, I'm going to show? No, her? I mean, I, I, it took me because I, I, I'm cons- like very conservative with like I don't take a lot of risk, you know. And I knew the safe path was to just go and get my degree, like Kyle, and I was going to get into nuclear medicine. I just thought it was so boring and like I just didn't like it. Um, but it wasn't a lot of, per- like, it was more me coming to that point. I wasn't like, I wouldn't, I'm not the kind of person to take that risk without something to fall back on, you know? And so. I think, I think in his situation, he was so like frustrated and he was so stressed because he was still doing YouTube and then trying to study. And then they were like brands coming to us and, you know, like calling and, you know, people like calling, contacting him. And so it was really stressful. So it kind of like he had to do one or the other. You know, he had to make a choice. Yeah. And uh, at what point, I guess, were you completely okay with, all right, you know, I he is financially stable, you know, that I don't have to worry or you don't oh. want, like, do you want him to go back to college still? No, no, no. I mean, like, in the beginning, it was actually, there was not, no earnings <clears throat> in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, because that was, like, 2009. Before AdSense, right? Kind of. Well, there was AdSense, but there was hardly any advertising. I didn't even know about it. Like, the partnership program was, like, not things people knew about. Like, only certain YouTubers right. got access to that in the beginning. Um, I would say, like, 99% of people did not know about it. Mm-hmm. Like, did not know that you could even make money off of, off of you know, posting YouTube videos. So, at the time, it was a bigger risk, but... Um, you could still, like, still there were some ads and stuff coming in, like, in terms of, like, product placement and stuff. So it was a, it was a risk, but it's not quite like, hey, you know, <laughs> go and just do this thing and there's no money in it. Like, follow your dreams kind of thing. There was some money in it. Mm-hmm. But we didn't know yeah. that it was going to get <clears throat> so big, you know? I mean, yeah. it got big, like, maybe after 2010. Yeah. And so in the beginning, there was really no money. But 
you could just see how stressed he was. So it was kind of like he couldn't go like do both. He had to he had to make a choice. Mm-hmm. Plus, I was here like in the dorms at UNLV, mm-hmm. where like you have no privacy, and like for one, that's already stressful. Like to even make videos was like not common. People like. I mean, it was embarrassing, you know, and to be like, oh, you're with living with someone. So I have to literally wait until he's gone to make my videos for one. Um, and then we have suite mates. So it's like two rooms um, and there's two people in each room and you guys share a bathroom that's between the two rooms. And um, yeah, essentially, I like <laughs> there's like no time where there was like silence. And so I would have to go, you know, off campus mm-hmm. sometimes to film some stuff. If it was in my room, then I'd have to wait. You know, you're you're not just working on your own schedule. Plus, there's school. You know, so it was a very um, not an ideal situation for either for both. It was like either one is going to suffer. So it was to me, it was an easier decision. Um, and then when I brought brought it up to them, I, I was like surprised because I thought there was going to be more pushback. Mm. It wasn't like the stories that you hear from a lot of other like a- so called Asian parents. Yeah. I think a lot yeah. of parents would feel the same, but it wasn't it wasn't like dramatic. But I also think because we come from Hawaii, mm-hmm. it's a little bit different from us. Because we do have Asian parents, but I guess the Hawaii culture, you guys are more like lenient and understanding of different things. You know, you're not necessarily... You're talking like first generation Asian parents. Yeah, yeah. Where it's oh. like, this is the model you follow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. She's like, she has, I mean, you can, she has, other than a Hawaiian, like pigeon accent, she doesn't have an accent. And she's <laughs> like, what are you, third generation? Third. Because mm-hmm. you're... Your grandfather right. immigrated. Came from Japan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, to Hawaii. Right. So even my grandparents don't have accents. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, pigeon accents. Well, they were born in Hawaii. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I guess because, so you were born in Hawaii, right? Big Island. Right. And uh, and you have kind of a bigger family, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, when you were growing up, what parallels do you see similar to Ryan growing up? So, you know, we can get to know a little bit more about you, get to know a little bit more about Ryan. Because... Uh, we, we touched on it a little bit. You said that you as well have ADHD, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, when you were growing up and you saw Ryan growing up, like, what did you see similarities a lot of? Jeez. Were you a troublemaker, <laughs> too? Did you, did you punch girls in the stomach? Know. No, but you know what? I did hit a boy. <laughs> no. See, we're both sexist. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I was older. I wasn't like kindergarten. This is what my dad tells me. Uh-huh. I don't quite remember, but you know, that's what he told me is the boy's father came to our house. Lucky thing, he was Asian also. <laughs> and then, what does that have to do with it? <laughs> well, so I guess he was a little bit more understanding, okay. you know, because okay. the culture. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I was doing it. Because I hated him or anything, I think I think he either like he must have harassed me or something. Uh-huh. I don't know what it was. It had to be like around, I'd say second grade. But I remember that. Where did you punch him? No, I didn't. I don't even know like how I hit him. But I vaguely remember. Oh yeah, the dad came to our house. I mean, I know who the boy is still <laughs> to this yes, day. Yes, and he still is in Hilo. That's a small town. No, we can find him. No, Oahu. Oh, oh. He, lives, he lives in Honolulu. Did you know about this story? No, I didn't know she punched. See, they can't. If I knew this back when I was a, ki- a kindergartner, I would have been like, <laughs> you used to do that too. <laughs> you know? Parents can't tell their bad stuff. There's so much stuff that no, I don't know about. No, the thing is, there's so many stories, right? <laughs> like, like you have so many stories. We have so many stories, but it doesn't just come out. It has, someone has to dig it out. Right. Like, you know, there has to be like a situation. That, and the time that the teacher called the house, that Ryan punched the girl in the stomach. We got bring this I was up every podcast. <laughs> I, I, my, it's like Uncle Wendell. Yeah, I um, got the call. My dad. Yeah, but maybe if I got the call, maybe I would have had a flashback. Yeah. <laughs> maybe <laughs> you know. Like, oh, don't worry, I did that before. <laughs> but um, I, I know that the, that the boy he either like chased me or he he did something to me, mm. and I had four brothers, so it's kind of like. I Were would you think, a tomboy then, almost? Yeah, I was. I was. In fact, my dad was kind of worried <laughs> that um, I would be, like, totally, like, tomboy. Mm. Yeah. I have four brothers, you know? Yeah. You yeah. have a really big family, actually. That's, well, back then, mm, for back then, yeah, that's, that's not... Yeah, that's pretty average, actually, that's true, I think. That's true. Yeah. People have less... Like, families have sh- shrunk, huh? Right. Other uh-huh. than, like, Mormon families, I guess. Yeah. But, like, in general, like... Oh, yeah. Like, it, it was common to have, like, five brothers, mm-hmm. right? And, right. Or, like... A bunch of siblings. Yeah, because back then, that's all they had. You know, yeah. there was no entertainment. <laughs> what do you do when you're bored, you know? I don't and know if that's what it is. I think, like, they came from big families. Mm. So, it was okay. You know what I mean? But now, when you have 
when you have children, it's kind of like you think about economy yeah, and true. what it, what college costs and, yeah. you know. So it's there's true. different, like, I mean, even like our generation, most of us, like we worked mm. to, to pay for college, you know. But, yeah, but now we pay for college. Parents pay for college. So but that's yeah. because also you could work and pay for college and not be in like huge amounts of debt. So could you guys. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, but, you know, a lot of times like we, yeah, I, I think we did spoil our kids you know, our generation, but it's because we didn't have, have it easy. Yeah. So, you know, we want to do whatever we can, give them whatever we can because we didn't get it, yeah. you know? But speaking on that, uh, that just reminded me when you were talking about, uh, I guess who was the more dis- disciplinary one? Yeah. I think it was her because I do remember like, and I only know this, this story cause I don't remember it specifically, but I do know that the only time I can really think of that my dad really yelled or really disciplined was, that time <laughs> when I supposedly, uh, I guess he yelled at me and stuff. They, they told me this. Story. I don't really remember it too much, but I, I punched the girl, right, for cutting me in line. <laughs> so I punched <laughs> her in the stomach. She dropped a lot of power behind this. <laughs> um, you know, I was in kindergarten, and then I guess I got sent to the principal's office. They called home. When I went home, my dad was the one to, you know, normally she would be the one yelling or spanking or whatever it is, but apparently he was the one who mm-hmm. had to deal with me. And I don't really remember. I have no real, unless I blocked it out, I have no real memories of him <laughs> really, you know, disciplining me. But supposedly he gave me a, a big, I don't know what he did, yelling or yeah. something. He was he trying to make me, me cry. He tried he to make said. you cry, but you wouldn't cry. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan's not really was, a crier. I felt I was know? right. But you're, never, you're not really a crier because no. I, I tried to make him cry too. You know? See these parents? <laughs> Abusive. <laughs> Try to make your kids cry. Physical, <laughs> emotional. No, because you kind of want to get a reaction, right? <laughs> you know, either like yell back. And, and Kyle and Ryan, I used to hate it because when I used to lecture them, they never contest. Like they'd always be like, okay. I'd be like, and you know, <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever. Like <laughs> and they'd be like, okay. And I'd be like, you know, you kind of want yeah. it. But that's that's the, you know how male and female. Yeah. Like females, we like to like keep going because you want to see that they're engaged in the conversation exactly. well you know? not only that but i guess you want to get the last word and they say okay and it's <laughs> you like, already have, they have the last word <laughs> yeah. oh, right okay. okay you're right <laughs> and it just shuts you down it like, does oh. it does so you kind of want him yeah i remember the time that um he, I, you didn't even remember like he told my dad used to take pick him um after school my dad used to pick them up and then take him to basketball. And this is the days, you know, he hated basketball and judo. And so he would give my father, like, all these excuses. I have a stomachache, headache, whatever. <laughs> and then I find out later that, oh, he didn't go because, oh, he had stomachache. It just, like, be fuming. So yeah. we went home, and I told him, you know, if you think that you're, like, smart enough, like, you can make your own decisions, then... I'm going to pack your bags and you go to grandpa's and you make all your decisions and you're thinking, oh, he's going to cry. He doesn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> he just like, he just like sits there. He doesn't cry, you know? So I pack up this little bag and I, and I leave it. And I'm waiting for him to like tell me something, you know, or come back <laughs> with something. He doesn't do anything. So then I have to go back into his room. Like, so what? You understand? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then of course, like, you know, he's like, oh, okay. Okay. And so then I tell him, because I have to get the last word, right? Because he said, okay. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm leaving this bag right here. So it's a reminder <laughs> that recall. you're not old enough to make your own decisions. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if you're, you're supposed to go basketball, you're going to basketball. <laughs> well, I don't remember that one, but. <laughs> 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 Makes sense. Sounds like me. I guess, uh, I guess we're talking a lot, a lot, of, a lot about uh, the bad things that he did. <laughs> but how about you know? Let's you know. Let's build him up a little bit. What, what are, because I, I can tell that bad. I think I was justified. <laughs> she cut me he, in line. He was challenging. Yeah. <laughs> but that, in a way, was that something that you saw positive in your son? Oh, for sure. And, like, I, where were some other traits about him that you recognized? Like, oh no, there's like a lot of good things about him. Did you ever recognize? Oh, he's he's going to do great things or did you s- notice like, Oh, he's a good kid. Like, did you ever think he would have the influence that he has, you know, on a lot of people's lives? Oh no, definitely. I mean, we didn't even see this whole YouTube thing. Yeah. I mean, that was like total shock because, and I think the first time we realized it is, um, you and Sean made Revo. Mm. There was yeah. this like, um, nonprofit organization in Hilo and they, um, no, I guess it's part of like a bigger organization, but they were called Revo. 
And there was a uh, MySpace contest that if they got so many, I don't know what it was, likes or votes. I don't remember what it was Votes or time. something. Yeah. And then um, they could win like $20,000 or $10,000. It, it was a lot. Yeah. And so um, he did a video. For, he and Sean did a video and they won. And then I was like, and you know, these are people all over the world voting for, for these people in Hilo. So I was like, I told him, wow, Ryan, you you actually make a difference in the world, you know? And you folks were like high school, yeah, right? Like 15, probably. Yeah, that was a quite a surprise that he's able to like, he was able to reach people and um, people like moved, you know? Yeah, when it came to like, you actually saw that it made money for someone and it was a good organization. Mm -hmm. Like it was, was it promoting art and right. um, they had like art shows and stuff mm -hmm. and it was like a nonprofit, I think. So yeah, that was like pretty cool. But at the time we didn't think, I mean, we didn't think much, Sean and I didn't think much of right. it. We were like, oh, they're asking for something, I guess. Yeah. Like, and it was a funny video too. Yeah. It was just like a, oh, yeah, I guess that back then people just threw up whatever they wanted. On YouTube, <laughs> yeah. You know, but it was funny. I thought it was, I funny. Don't it was entertaining it, to be honest. Yeah. What did you guys do with that money? No, we it's didn't get the money. Us. It was for oh. Revo. So people had to go on MySpace and vote for them. Oh, yeah. I see. And then they won. Yeah. yeah so that was like impressive Got that it. they actually made a difference, you know? So is that uh, 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 that's when you kind of saw like, oh, he, yeah, that he, he actually. He's like, not a normal kid. No, I still think he's, on, he's normal, a normal kid. Like, I just think that he had I'm like. A kid, look at my beard. <laughs> <laughs> I, ju I just think that he has, he has an effect on people, you know, that. That was quite a surprise. Mm. And then I think the next, in a couple of years after that, there was um, a boy, he's like Hapa, like half Japanese, half mm. Dutch. And he um, lived in Curacao. And he actually asked his parents to bring him to Hilo so he could meet Ryan. So he was bullied in school because, you know, I guess like there's hardly any Asians. And so um, he... Um, <laughs> Paco's instructing her because <laughs> she was too far from the mic just so people are wondering why there's a pause there <laughs> you're good you're fine so he um he watched Ryan's videos yeah he used to be like really like um I don't know how bad he felt but he was bullied right he was pretty I mean it was like this how old was he he must have been like a little like nine-year-old or something um, oh this is young kid and he yeah. looked very depressed and yeah you know, um I just remember we had to, I had no idea. You were talking to the mom, I guess. The, she contacted email. the paper. The, the the what? She contacted the newspaper. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, so so in order to get to, to contact you, oh, right. she wrote into the newspaper asking if, um, she probably told, told her story about her son and how he was bullied. And he goes, and the, only, the only time she heard him laugh was when he was watching his videos. Mm. And so, um, you know, she wanted to say that, oh, they were making a trip to Hawaii and he really wants to meet Ryan. And so the newspaper um, contacted us, the local um, Hilo paper. Yeah, so he actually came to Hilo and then we got together, met him at Starbucks, I think. Yep. Yeah. So that was kind of like, wow. And here he was in Curacao, you know. Yep, this super shy, like, did, almost didn't say anything. Yeah. He's just like looking mm -hmm. down the whole time. But the real cool thing is that like, I don't know how many years later, in J when we first went to Japan, uh, me, Sean, and uh, Will, was it Will? Greg. Will and Greg, yeah. Uh, we had a meet and greet, and he was there, and he was like an adult, and it was just like one of the coolest right. things ever. He was like, oh, I remember meeting this kid, and now he's like this really, I mean, he's hot, but he's half like white, half Japanese, mm -hmm. hella good looking, good looking kid. Tall, taller than all of us, and I was just like, man, this guy's all confident, shaking her hand, his hands yeah. bigger than ours. <laughs> I was like, man, I remember when you were you were a little depressed kid. Yeah. <laughs> remember that? Yeah, <laughs> so as intimidating as you look right now, <laughs> good looking dude, dressed all nice. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. So was that cool. was amazing, yeah. you know, to have somebody travel so far just mm -hmm. because, like, helped him through like a really hard time. Yeah, yeah. See that depressed kids out there and sad people gets better. Gets exactly. Better. As long as you make a long a very trip out to meet your idols. <laughs> That's the only way. No, <laughs> he was in a very weird situation, though, because it wasn't, like, wasn't he some I in some islands or something? like? Yeah, so Curacao is, like, I guess a, a small island amongst, like, so many islands, right? I, I don't know. 
I don't know where that is. Yeah, you, you looked that up. Um, but he basically was saying like, uh, even when he went to Japan, I think like he doesn't right, really he look like. Place, yeah, he doesn't look like because he's mixed. He doesn't really look like right. wherever he was. And then when he was watching your YouTube videos, he was like, oh, "See, that's that's like me. He's yeah. like me." But little did he know, he's a lot better looking. <laughs> mixed kids, man, they end up looking really good. Um, okay, well, I mean, we didn't really get too much into it. We got some Twitter questions in, but we didn't really get into it. But a uh, quick shishi break, and we'll be right back. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Yeah, <laughs> we're back. How's the song go? Shishi break song? I don't know. Will's the one who's made his <laughs> well, own can, rendition. I mean, you you could. I mean, I was just talking about the actual song that they, they, they just. Never mind. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> I'll fight you. That's where we're coming back. And we're back. <laughs> I'm gonna fight you. Why? One day I'm gonna get strong enough to beat you. I mean, it's not. I don't really think it's a strength thing. <laughs> one day I, I'm gonna break your legs. Like you could probably. Yeah, you're for as big as you are. You're kind of weak. <laughs> we don't have to put this in I'm just but like You know there's some people Like I mean Actually you wouldn't know You never wrestled But when you look at them They're like They're kind of like big So you would assume They have a certain strength But you're kind of weak For like how Kind of big your arms are And stuff I don't have big arms And like you're kind of athletic I mean you're athletic Like you're pretty athletic In everything you do Yeah but you're kind of weak. Dude, super <laughs> weak. I know. How come? <laughs> like you're good. I mean, I'm not trying to diss you. Like you're, you're good at other things. Like you're good at you know uh, other sports and like you play tennis, soccer, basketball. But you're but you're weak. <laughs> how come? I'm all about agility. like my arms could fit in your arms, but I think my arms are stronger than yours. Oh, you're way stronger. That's dude. weird. I don't know. It might be a. I always wondered about that. <laughs> just ask a doctor. Yeah, let's get a doctor. <laughs> or maybe you just don't try hard. <laughs> We've wrestled before. Um, it's I don't know how we got well. on this topic. <laughs> never ended well. That's Actually, funny. talking about uh, fighting, hmm? did, did uh, Kyle and Ryan oh, fight a lot? Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we should get. Ky we should have got Kyle on this one too. Yeah. We should get Kyle at some point. Yeah. But I don't think people will understand <laughs> the dynamic. Him. No, him. He speaks so pit. Oh, so oh, pigeon. Heavy. Heavy. No, I. He, I I think with people, he he'll speak good English. It's like among English well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> amongst amongst like friends, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's different. we'll put subtitles for him. <laughs> Wait, I edit that. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what though? He doesn't. He doesn't like. He's like them. He doesn't like being in videos. Like right. he yeah. hate. He always like. Even when I lived with him and I needed somebody, he would be like, he wouldn't want. He mm -hmm. he wouldn't want to do it. Most people would like jump at the, ch a lot of people jump at the chance. Hell yeah. I, I they hate it. <laughs> I know. I know. I love I know. being in your videos. And That's why I was always kind of like a. A challenge. Uh, like, yeah. Well, I was just embarrassed because I was just like, man, you know, even my own family wants to <laughs> be in this. I don't want to like inconvenience other people. And then I found out later after I left Hawaii, oh, people actually like being in videos. <laughs> You're like, they want to be seen. That weird. No, I didn't. At first I was just like, oh, they're embarrassed like to be a part of this. But yeah, I, I took you away from the topic. Sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Kyle and I, we fought a lot. A lot. So, so, but I think, you know what? It's normal. I mean, I just think, because my brothers fought, you know, and I keep hearing it, you know, like how, like when when you say like, well, how's your kids? And it's like, do they fight? It's like, oh yeah, they fight. Like, I think everybody does, yeah. you know? It's part of growing up. What was uh, one of your bigger fights, if you mm, recall? I think over the computer. We fought a lot over the computer. Yeah. That was we a big had deal. one computer. Yeah. And, and that Kyle, was like our best, our favorite activities, play mm -hmm. computer yeah. games and stuff. And Kyle was bigger. You know, he was older and he was a bully, poor thing. <laughs> I know. Because he was so little. Ryan was so little. So I didn't know like how long it was going on. But I remember one day I came home from work and then Ryan said, you know, Kyle, he punched me or something. That I just like railed into Kyle. I was like so mad. I was like, don't you ever touch him. I know he did later, but you know, he probably did it again and again, yeah. but I was like, don't you ever touch him. Yeah, we we fought physically a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was like, I don't remember this, but when I was a kid, apparently I stabbed him with a weed digger. What? <laughs> right? Like right I, by his I eye, so. eyebrow or something. 
Like, you know, like a weed digger. I was like three years or two years older or something like that. So I, it has like a little, you know, you know what a weed yeah. digger is, right? So yeah. I stabbed it and he's like a little scar right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also heard, I don't remember this, but I don't know how old I was, but I had to go to a hospital once because he was like, Oh, he pulled your arm out of my socket. <laughs> Your elbow, like, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He, like dislocated my arm as like, yeah. a kid swinging me around. <laughs> so he got yelled, for, yelled at that for that. Yeah, he got yelled at for that. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I know. But you know why though? I never liked, like I wouldn't back down to him. Like uh-huh. if he hit me or like did something that hurt me, I was like, I'm gonna return tenfold. Like whatever you do, if it's a pinch, I'm giving you like a punch. <laughs> if it's a punch, I'm gonna stab you <laughs> in the eye because it was just like it was just like you're not gonna get. The best of me. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to get the okay. I was always I'm I was gonna competitive say okay. with him because he was always like, like she said, he was naturally good. He's one of those people that you just hate because they're always good at stuff mm-hmm. that you have to work hard for, you know? Yeah. Like for like judo and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like he got, uh, we both played second in the state, um, but like he did not train. There's, I mean, he trained, no. he went to practice, but he didn't train like how I trained, yeah. you know, for like everything. I worked really hard compared to him. Um, but he was just naturally good. And that was the most irritating thing in the world to me. People who like, and there's, you know, people like that, I'm sure. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, you're a good example. You're someone who's naturally good at a lot of things, right. that, which makes you lazy. Super. I'm pretty right. much Kyle. What's yeah. up, mom? Yeah, kinda. Well, maybe it's a firstborn <laughs> thing. Mm, I don't know. I think it's your, your personality. Like he was so laid back. Yeah, but if I was laid back, I would be so bad at everything. (laughs) Yeah, you'd be worse. He was just naturally good at everything. No, but I think like as a second child though, it makes you more competitive. Yeah. Usually the second child is more competitive Mm. because they see what the older child, they want to be better. I don't know. You and your sister were like our like best friends. Yeah, but we didn't get along uh, a couple of times too. Really? Because she took a lot of things for granted. Like she would take for granted me driving her around and stuff. And like she wouldn't like care about me or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember as a young kid one time, I don't know if I told this story here. I tell the story a lot cause it's, it's probably my, my favorite one. Uh, but we were in the backseat of a car, uh, after a soccer game and she was sleeping and just had her mouth open and she was like sleeping like, like that. And I was in, eating an egg salad sandwich and I saw her <laughs> and I just put a big piece of egg in her <laughs> mouth <laughs> and there's this egg on on, oh, her, you. <laughs> on her tongue as she's sleeping and then the car hit a bump and she went <gasps> oh, oh, you. And she started choking, she started choking Damn. and she spat it out and i was laughing <laughs> super hard oh my goodness well yeah. oh no the best thing was when kyle went away to college i think then it got better mm. is that yeah. when you feel like you started really connecting well with that's i mean we never i mean we didn't become like close like how you guys are we just didn't fight Mm. so naturally we started getting like we could be in the same room Mm. before like we couldn't really even but i think even up until then you guys didn't really hardly talk and then after Mm -hmm. he left then it was like at least they could like talk or play games together before it was like don't play with each other yeah don't even talk to each other i was like (laughs) yeah but now you guys are like pretty close yeah yeah i guess i mean yeah yeah much better. <laughs> That's real convincing. Right I mean, it's not like I go to, you know, like some siblings are like best friends and they yeah. like tell each other everything. Like, I don't, I, I don't know what he did for the past month. <laughs> like, I'm sure he went to work, mm. but like, I don't know. I don't call him, you know, mm. unless Actually, I need something. or he when, you, something. when they lived in the same house, they didn't yeah. even talk to each other. For real? Yeah. I'd be like, Different floors. oh, where's Kyle? It's like, I don't know. And then I find out like Kyle's in his bedroom. Like, it's like. Just a different floor, you know, like, and I think more so boys and just their personalities, like they're not mm. talkers, you know. Yeah. So text now is the best thing. Mm. Do you guys have a family group text? No. No. Remember, oh. my dad doesn't <laughs> understand phones. <laughs> He's gonna listen to this. He still says "puckle." <laughs> puckle, telling everybody. I don't know. Stop, I don't know. He no. doesn't. But he really doesn't understand <laughs> technology. Yes, that's so true. Hey, yeah. Uncle Wendell, if you have an issue, just text me. <laughs> oh, you can't. That's right. Oh. He, really, he really can't text. Shucks. But he knows how to make outgoing calls now. <laughs> I will say that. 
Uh, um, do you want to get into some Twitter cues? Because there's some, we actually there's answered a lot of the Twitter questions. Well, you brought you used some a lot of those as your own questions <laughs> no, without giving things. them credit. These are things that I had uh, thought out. Oh yeah, yeah. You because didn't, you didn't I take study. all these people's questions <laughs> <laughs> because I study my guests. And okay, I know this what is I an interesting one because I don't even know it. Um, from Jordan, the anime dude. What is Ryan's first word? Oh my gosh, I don't know. See, I don't. That's why I don't know. How come parents? You don't. You don't. I bet but you remember Kyle's first word. No, no. So, <laughs> so usually you keep um, like baby albums. You know, you just buy them at a stationery store or whatever, and then you fill in all these blanks, like, you know, first first word, um, day walked. You Did know, you? all this kind of thing. And I know Kyle's one is pretty filled out. Ah. <laughs> second I'm child, you, the second child I'm doesn't tell get you shit. really. The second child, you really get. Um, <laughs> you know, I think you're so busy with the f- with like having two kids that the second child. I know you have less. Well, the pictures. first child is probably more exciting because it's your first child. Well, and you have time. Yeah, right? like your you first car, you take probably take a lot of pictures of your first car. <laughs> but your second car is like oh, I already had the first. <laughs> you know, the height's so gone. <laughs> So you do, you have like significant, significantly less pictures. I know. And I know that baby al- album is not fully um, <laughs> complete. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I don't know my first word. <laughs> there you go, but Jordan. it's possible I have it, you know, but yeah. it's not here. Yena Kim asks, what's your favorite embarrassing thing that Ryan did as a kid? Favorite embarrassing Favorite embarrassing. Yeah. You know, if it was embarrassing, I don't think it was my favorite. <laughs> oh. Do you have a favorite story? Um, no, but it, what was embarrassing is, but we have it in your book, you know, mm. where he um, told the kindergartner teacher, like he would actually like contest what she would tell him to do, <laughs> you know? And so that was like so embarrassing. I mean, I think, I don't know how many parents go through this, but... Normally you have like a 10, 15 minutes is a long parent teacher conference. Mine was like almost 50 minutes. And I five was zero. Like five zero. Yeah. <laughs> Kindergarten. Trouble <laughs> Kindergarten. <baby. laughs> so much to talk about. Oh my gosh. Oh, I, yeah. I don't recall. I wasn't in that meeting. <laughs> Even if I was, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many parents gotta go through that at kindergarten, but and was like f- almost 50 minutes. Embarrassing. But I do um, appreciate that teacher because she really um, was patient with him. Like Goya. Really, Goya. Is she still yeah. alive? I think so. I'm not sure. Mm. But She's she, like listening to the podcast. Excuse me. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, at least I care to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, she like really tried to understand him and wasn't like the kind of person that would be like, you know, you go talk to the vice principal or uh-huh. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like push it off to someone else. Yeah, exactly. Like just like, you know, my, my, my son is, was like that. You know, she'd be like, no, you know, we, we, like we just have to um, treat him like he's a old man in a little boy's body. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Because he would like contest her. Like if she would say something, like sh- if it was to sit on the floor and then somebody else is not sitting on the floor, he'd be like, well, how come they're not sitting on the floor? Yeah. You know, he'd be like contest her. Yeah. And so... Um, you know, it almost sounds like a lot like a lot of people look up to Ryan and they see him as an idol. But as a kid growing up until now, like super troublemaker, <laughs> super ADHD, not paying attention. Almost like if you saw him growing up, you'd be like, this kid is not going to make it. You know, they're going to end up selling drugs and like not no. having a career or anything. No, but you, so I kind of look at it as he so he was so strong minded that whatever he decided to do, he was going to like do it. You know, so if he decided like he was gonna do well at wrestling, he was gonna do well. If he was gonna do judo, he was gonna do 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 it well. I'm not so sure about basketball though, because you really hated basketball, <laughs> and he really was not good. <laughs> Still isn't. Well, the thing is with judo, I was awful at it. Right, my whole like pretty much until like I I would say high school. Yeah, high school, eighth grade, because I hated it. Um, but I did it my whole life. I should be good at it, but I was like pretty mm-hmm. awful. And then in high school, I had fun. So I was like, oh, this is fun. Um, and then I just became good. <laughs> I just tried. Yeah, I actually tried. That's true. But then, but, and then all the techniques came back, right? Yeah. All that knowledge kicked in. And then, yeah, so he was good in high school. But I do remember like growing up and stuff, like going, because we'd have to go to tournaments, being in a club. Yeah. And I would like just not even try. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's the strong-minded part. Like if he was like, I'm not going to care, he didn't care. Mm-hmm. 
But if he was like, I'm going to do it good, he's going to do it good. Yeah. You know, so he could be, his, he was like his worst enemy to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You did judo for a little bit. I did as a kid. Mm-hmm. And I, my parents. Were you weak? <laughs> <laughs> I actually got second in states. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's what? good. Uh, in yeah. states? In you a didn't state go to states? In a state tournament. Oh, oh, like in a, not like high school. Like club. Not high school. Club. Yeah, yeah, club. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's uh, good. Yeah. Because, you know, Oahu is a big. Yeah, there's a like a of lot of like Hong Kong G's and yeah. stuff like that, and yeah. clubs. And then um, I remember I did not like it because I would have a lot of headaches as a kid. So getting thrown around, my mm. brain would rattle in my skull. So I'd always get like headaches after practice. And I told mm. my mom I didn't want to do it. And she was like, it's long, once you get your blue belt, you can quit. So then that's, that's when I tried super hard. <laughs> so that you could quit. Yeah. Well, we had the same agreement, but mine was black. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. No, so, so the agreement was... You had to do um, a martial art. This is like from like young time. You have to do a martial art and you have to do a team sport. So it was like, okay, if you don't want to do basketball, then you got to do soccer. Mm-hmm. It was like, no, I don't want to do soccer. Okay, then you don't want to do basketball. You do baseball. No, I don't want to do baseball. Okay, then you got to go basketball, yeah. you know? And so then it was like, okay, you don't want to go judo, then you got to go karate, but you start from white belt. Oh, okay, no then. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like that was kind of like kind of the rule. Dang, I, I kind of want to go into one thing, but we should stick to the Twitter questions. Well, just go. We can always come back to it. All right. Okay. Because uh, I guess talking about that, you know, in, in the parenting aspect, um, and, you know, it seemed like you had kind of like a set uh, goals that he had to accomplish. Uh, and, and, you know, he was completing these goals and stuff. And earlier you also talked about how as a parent, you know, sometimes you want uh, your kid, you want your kid to be, uh, happy doing with what they're doing, right? Mm. So I think for a lot of kids, especially who watch YouTube, and you know maybe they want to go into a creative field or they want to go into a field that isn't necessarily approved by their parents, what suggestions do both of you have to these kids where they can prove like, oh, you know, this is how I can convince my parents to, to go into this field that I want to go into? You're saying you're talking about, you're asking what, do you, as a kid, do you tell your parents to convince you to let you do YouTube as a career? Not, no, not YouTube, a creative field. Oh, so a creative say, yeah, field, yeah, 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 right, right, yeah. So, because, you know, a lot of people be like, oh, I want to do YouTube. Ah, those kids are dumb. But, uh, <laughs> like, some people want to do, you know, like, maybe they want to do music. I would say have a plan. Right. You have to have a plan. Like, and then, like she said, give them the warnings. Like, okay, well, you know, most, she would tell me all the time, because I, from a young kid age, before YouTube, I'd be like, oh, I want to be an actor. And you know what she said? She said, Oh, she's like, she didn't say, oh, follow your dream. She was like, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of starving actors in L.A. And I was like, okay, I'll go do medicine then. And then the singing That's what thing you should too, say. right? The huh? singing. What? You want, you sang a lot. I whatever. didn't want to be a singer, though. I just no. used to sing a lot. And mm-hmm. she's like, you're not a singer. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> it didn't now, stop me. But you know what? Now you can sing, though. Yeah, you can well, sing. I, yeah. To, a certain, to a certain degree. Um, and that's just being around singers like Jr. and David and... You know, well, I gotta still. hang around them more than. <laughs> yeah. No, it helps to be around singers. They teach. I mean, I'll never have a singer's voice, but I can do enough to like. I understand it more. Mm-hmm. It's more of a science. Um, I mean, not it's not a science, but like there <laughs> is some science. To yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that I didn't. Mm-hmm. Most people don't really know about. But besides the point, yeah, I would say have a plan. Give them, give them all. Like, I'm saying from my. You can mm-hmm. give your perspective, but I think it helps for her to sh- that the fact that she told me like, okay. This is what you're up against. You might not, if you make it great, most people don't. There's like a point something percent chance in the entertainment field, at least for me, going to be a actor or a entertainer of some sort. It's very rare to really blow up, right? Um, To know that and get that information from her, it it helped me because I'm like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I got to be like committed to it. And like, I already know, like if I, I don't want her to tell me, oh, I told you so. You know, so you got to commit to it. And I think knowing the, if she's like, I mean, no offense to other people who, who are like this, but if she were, if she were just like, yeah, you know what? You could be an actor if you work hard and you just do it. Right. Like, which is true, but be, I, I think it's just being realistic. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people work hard. It doesn't mean you're going to be successful right. in entertainment. You might even be good at it, but it doesn't mean you're going to make money. Yeah. You know, so if you're willing to live poor or if you're willing to live all these like negative, negative things that come with it, then. Yeah, by all means. But if not, you can just don't don't go in thinking, you know, Easy. be yeah, be realistic. Mm, That's right. all I would, I would say. And you know, a lot of times I think it's like opportunity. But opportunity is only like it's timing. 
and it's like being ready, right? And so, I mean, I related back to Ryan. It's kind of like, you know, he was like doing YouTube and then the opportunity came to make money. And so he was like fortunate. You know what I mean? So there's that one quote that's like luck equals uh, like preparation plus opportunity. Right, for yep. sure. You know, so it's all timing. So I remember a, um, a father, I was like, oh, what's your son studying? You know, he's in college. And he said, oh, um, he, I forget he was studying like music, and you know, and he's like, yeah, you know, he's studying music. I don't know where that's going to take him. And, he, and he's in California. And I was like, you know, you never know. It's like, if that's what he loves, I mean, who knows, right? Yeah. If he has that opportunity and he's ready, I mean, doors might just open. You just never know. So you just got to encourage them to be successful in what, whatever, whichever way they go. Of course, you want them to be a little focused. You know, you don't want to jump from like, okay, singing, acting. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So at least you want them to be a little focused and then... Um, so that guy is definitely selling knives door to door <laughs> now, right? I mean, you never know. Well, you didn't right? give me a happy ending, so. <laughs> well, I haven't. I haven't. He didn't make it. I, I haven't talked to the father since, but I remember. His I mean, name is Bruno Mars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's definitely selling well, knives. Bruno actually started from when he was young. Yeah. yeah. So he was like ready, you know, and then he had opportunity. See, this sounds like the opposite of an inspiring like <laughs> podcast, but it's you know you need I think that it, sense of realism. Yeah, like I mean, I'm, we're not saying hey. You, there's no chance the odds might be slim but like again you work hard enough even sometimes people yeah. who work their ass off right it pays off in different ways mm -hmm. it doesn't always mean it's going to be the end right. result you expect like yeah. you if you work your ass off it's going to pay off in some way it might just not be the exact way you think it is mm -hmm. because of just statistically it's not realistic no yeah. but if everybody that worked hard made it in that industry then nobody would have made it because it's all the same everybody's you know yeah yeah because like if i'm completely honest i didn't work hard most of my life <laughs> and I've found myself in a very fortunate situation and, and I'm like along with you guys and stuff and we I force you to work hard yeah <laughs> you force me to work hard now yeah uh, yeah but you know you were ready right I mean like you you have like skills and then there was then there was this opportunity yeah a little bit I would know? say so but if you didn't have like that experience you wouldn't be here. Yeah, that's true too. Cause you did do things before that, right. that even for me to like, look at it and be like, okay, yeah, he understands. Mm -hmm. Like if had you not made any videos and just came like, and asked to be a part of this, I would be like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. You know, so there is something there. Right. And even with your personality and stuff like that's you, that comes with you like doing some hosting things. Like you weren't always a great speaker. I don't think without having to build that up. It's a skill. No, I was always a great speaker. <laughs> Ever since birth, like my first words was actually a paragraph. I quoted <laughs> William Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. But in, in all realness, and actually, at, <laughs> as a kid, I was a I, I did theater and stuff. Really? Yeah. So, so that's what I mean. Like I did, you put in some work, yeah, right, right? Right. Yeah. I'm sure that helped. You did a lot. Did a lot. I never did theater. I hated. I actually don't like public speaking at all. I hate speaking in front of people. You just hate the public. <laughs> that's not wrong that's not i don't wrong. like being in public i like being in private <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right <laughs> well i mean i, I like that segment because that's actually something that you know a, a lot of people are curious about and i i think that a lot of listeners uh, especially younger or people who are trying to find themselves and don't really know how to appease their parents uh. you know It'll help them. I so. think, well, you know, parents worry, right? Of course, because so they want they, the best. Yeah, they want the best. They want them to be successful. They want them to be able to earn enough money to make a living. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So parents have a lot of um, fear for their kids. But um, sometimes you just have to look like if they have the talent or the passion, you know, you never know. I mean, who knows, right? Like, we didn't know Ryan was going to be this far. I mean, yeah. we didn't plan for this. Not at all. But right? I think under, I think a lot of people need to understand, too, from the parents' perspective is their kids are considered like an investment. Exactly. Because, you know, I put so much money into this per, in, into uh, my offspring, this person that I care about, that I want them to succeed in the way that I see. Because maybe they don't have the perspective or the openness to, to understand that they're, oh, there's a different ways that you can make money, especially with the internet nowadays. And so if you were to explain that, and like you said, like have a plan, show them how you can do it, right. how you can actually have a revenue and be financially stable and like what your three right. to five year plan is. Yep. 
it helps. It right. helps. Oh yeah. So that's still <clears throat> the the guidance part. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I still think a lot of people once they see a lot of people don't realize they don't see the work that goes in. Like you look at basketball players and say, I want to be a basketball player. They get millions of dollars. Um, they, you know, live, have like the nicest clothes, nicest cars, everything. They see all the things, you know, that basically they see the rewards and they think that, you know, they know it's hard work. They might be good at basketball, but you don't really see, you know, if you really try to map out what your plan is, then you kind of, it becomes more real. Let me do it from a, from a YouTuber perspective. They, a lot of people, what they, what they tell me especially like kids that I've encouraged like, oh yeah, do what you love. Do, if you want to make YouTube videos, make them. A lot of them will make, I would say videos for about a month, maybe two months. And they realize, mm -hmm. holy crap, this isn't easy. Like along with other stuff I have going on in my life, like right. I just don't have time. But that's like, if you want to be committed YouTuber, you got to dedicate your life to yeah. it at this yeah. point, you know? Um, and people don't, don't realize that. So when you say like, put together a plan, like how are you going to be successful? You got to do your research, like ask a YouTuber, what do you do every day? Like a, the one that you want to be like, and most of them will tell you like, oh, they're either filming every day, editing, or they had to build up. Like, how did you get to where you were? It's never the story that people think it is. Yeah. It's a lot more work than people think it is. And until you try it for yourself, that's when they realize like, okay, this is not what I want to do, or this is too much. Mm -hmm. And I think those people are the people that actually like respect. They, they find a newfound respect uh, for people who are doing it. You yeah. Know? Even if you don't like what they're creating, you can still be like, you know, they're working hard. Yeah. It's a lot of work. I mean, like I, when, I mean like when people first started doing daily videos, um, I mean, there was one guy, even when I started who did daily videos and I was just like, this is n not content. Like this is just, I mean, it, at the time it was new. It was like, I don't want to see you walk to the mall. Like, I don't care. Um, obviously there was an audience for that and there still is more now than ever. But uh, you don't realize, even for me as a YouTuber, it was like, oh, yeah, I could do that every day. Until you do it, mm -hmm. then you realize, holy crap, no. You can't even take a day. If you're a daily vlogger, you can't take a day off. Yeah. Even even like, you know, I don't know how often um, PewDiePie posts pretty much every day. Pretty much every day. And I know he shoots a lot in one, all at once, so it, he kind of spreads it out. But just the fact, and now he has a lot of help, but in the beginning... He didn't have the team that he had, you know, he had to work on that and put in all that time and effort and you don't, re you don't really see it because you don't see all, you don't see that side. Yeah. People think our videos, if they're five minutes long, took 10 minutes to make, you know, you don't realize how long it takes to film and edit and write and everything that goes into it. But mm -hmm. I mean, smart people know, but uh, yeah. until you do it, it's really hard to, yeah. hard to say. So I think, you know, if I, as a parent, if I saw like, a child like you know your child working so hard and just like improving and i mean i mean that comes with talent too right so then you recognize that and of course you want to support it you know yeah. so i think that's what you got to do if that's what you want to do like prove it then you know exactly prove it yeah less about talking yeah and it's not as easy as you think and so naturally your parents are not just going to jump on it because you you that's what you want to do because it looks nice or you know looks like fun yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway, um, thank you for joining us on this special Mother's Day edition. Thank you to Paco for being a good moderator. And a good um, mother. Because I didn't know how to. <laughs> yeah, thank you for being a good mother, Paco. Um, and um, yeah, thank I didn't. You, thank you, Auntie Lucy. Thanks to your mom. For I did. I here. just did. No, you didn't. Okay. Thanks, mom. <laughs> Tell her you love her. I love you, mom. I love you, Ryan. I love you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, with that being said, where can they follow us? You can, f I was just going to say that. <laughs> I got to follow I us. Check. <laughs> You're 50, 50 with that. I am. Exactly. I am. I that is, that is my fault. I always forget <laughs> at <laughs> off the pill on Twitter and at off the pill podcast on Instagram. Um, special mother's day edition. Um, yeah, wasn't, we weren't expecting to do this one, but I guess with that being said, you know, actually know what to do because you actually but you know what? Watch Wait, the podcast. when you said, if you don't like what, I don't like it. What? <laughs> you know when you guys ask like, oh, who doesn't like the breathing in the mic? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I don't like it. I, a lot of people don't like you know what, it. Auntie, you put on the headset for me, please. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she did this whole thing because my mom did this whole thing because she didn't want to hear herself <laughs> and let alone the breathing into the mic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. With that being said, uh, tune in next time for the next Off the Pill podcast. We'll talk to you next podcast. <sighs>
Well, we can't end it if you don't do it. So why? We have, just we're gonna part have to keep talking. Then are you kidding me? No. Ready? No. Why, bud? I don't get it. That's just what it is. <sighs> Until we come up with a new thing, it, this really isn't good for the mics. David really? said. Yeah. That's why I think you guys shouldn't do it, and it's dirty. Yeah, it but this, is we just dirty. Put our head on the mics. Nah. Let's just end it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>